welcome to the Old Time Radio Westerns. I'm your host, Andrew Rines, and let's get into this episode. This episode's going to be Half Gun Will Travel. Original air date is December 21st, 1958. In this episode, Paladin tries to prevent a battle between Matt Beecher and the Pawnee. Title of this episode, Hanging Cross. Hope you enjoy, and again, thanks for listening. In all my life, I've only seen a dozen real killers. But I've seen 10,000 people who will sit back and let murder happen. Which is the greater evil? Have Gun, Will Travel. Starring Mr. John Daner as Paladin. San Francisco, 1875, the Carlton Hotel, headquarters of the man called Paladin. Oh, good afternoon, Mr. Paladin. Good afternoon, Mr. Stanford. Uh, pardon me. Yes? You dropped these by the desk. Oh, thank you very much. The glove that holds a lady's hand holds a world of prettiness. Really? Yes. My name is... I'm not interested in your name. I don't Mm. wish to know it. I don't wish to know you. And if I did, this would not be the day, the hour, nor the place. I quite understand. Then if you will kindly release my hand. Hmm? Oh, (laughs) of course. Again, thank you very much. Hmm. Oh, ho, ho, pretty lady, not too impressed with Mr. Paladin. We are all entitled to mistakes, hey, boy. Oh, yes, but uh, how often? Uh, Seldom the time, the place, and the loved one all together. And husband make three. Huh. Telegram come for you. Oh. Answer? Yes. Wire back. Have gun. We'll travel. <laughs> Crime, delinquency, threats of war. These are the subjects that dominate our news headlines these days. Not very pleasant subjects, are they? You may say that somebody ought to do something about cutting down on crime and delinquency and in promoting peace among nations, but that there's nothing you personally can do about it. That's where you're wrong. You can wage your own fight against crime and delinquency in your own family by taking the family to the church or synagogue of your faith this week. The inspiration and guidance you and they will receive from spiritual contact will strengthen moral background and faith. Regular attendance at religious services will help your family to work out its own problems and give them comfort in facing the tensions of our present-day life. Worshiping together brings your family closer together, too, and supporting your own religious institution provides funds to help those individuals and families who, unlike you, are unable to help themselves. Find the strength for your life. Worship together this week. In a way, I was sorry to leave San Francisco just as Christmas was coming on. The shop windows, already frosted, were filled with all those wonderful surprises which seemed to appear only at the Christmas season. And there was an excitement in the eyes of passers-by, young and old alike. In the air, there was the smell of cookies and cakes and candies. It was a good time to be in San Francisco. And yet the telegram from Colorado Territory left me little choice. It was a long trip and a cold one. As I got closer to my destination, I heard more about the man named Beecher, the man who had hired me. And I didn't like what I heard. Matt Beecher was a hard man, and he ran his cattle empire with an iron fist. It was the day before Christmas when I arrived at the Beecher Ranch. You got business here, cowboy? I was told I'd find Matthew Beecher here. You found him. I pay you $25 a month if I like your work. This is my foreman, Tater. He'll sign you on. Howdy. No, I didn't come here to hire on as a hand, Mr. Beecher. No? What did you come for, then? My name is Paladin. You, uh, you may remember this. Have gun, will travel. So? Well, you sent me a wire. Asking my help, something about your boy. As I understand it, he was carried off during the Sioux War six years ago. Well, you're too late, mister. I got him back. Just a few days ago, Mr. Paladin. Oh, well, 
I'm glad everything worked out. It has. Tater, ride him out to the stage trail. He's going to start back now. And Mr. Beecher, it's a long trip from San Francisco. I'll take travel expenses for my trouble. You'll get nothing. Put him off the ranch, Tater. Mr. Beecher? What? Does the boy speak any English? No, he don't. Why? Do you speak any Indian dialect? No. Well, don't you want to talk to you, your son? You speak the Pawnee dialect? Some. All right, Tater. Take him up to the main house. We'll talk about them expenses later. Yes, sir. Come on, Mr. Paladin. Maybe I'd better set you straight about something. What's that? Well, we ain't too sure the boy is Matt Beecher's son. Well, he seems sure enough. Yeah, well, Matt's sure of everything. He found the boy riding off from a small band of Pawnees three, four days ago. Matt just says, that's my boy, and takes him. Huh. What do you think, Tater? Well, he looks Indian to me. Of course, Robbie was only two when the Indians took him. That was when they killed Mrs. Beecher, too. And that nearly finished Matt off when they killed his wife. Tater, is that you? Yep. Mr. Paladin, this here's my wife, Morty. Morty? Mr. Paladin? How's the boy today, Morty? Well, same as yesterday and the day before. Mm-hmm. Is he sick? Well, not hardly. It's just we got to keep an eye on him every minute or he'll squirt away. <laughs> boy! Hey, boy! There he is, Mr. Paladin. About as wild as any animal that I've ever seen. Poor little thing. Well, what do you think? Well, about eight years old, I should think. Mm, be about right. He could be white. Some of that grime were scraped off him. It's hard to say. Hard to scrape it off, too. Well, what's he say? I haven't talked to him yet, Mr. Beecher. Well, talk to him. I'm paying you. Kono la te fi. Si shoni, shoni kiburi, kiman. Kiwa. Kalate si shoni kiyo. Tegate. His name is Chiwa. His father is Kalate, chief of the Pawnees. You listen to me, boy. I'm your daddy. I'd sell my own soul. I'd give it away before I'd lose you again. He don't understand you, Mr. Beecher. Well, he's got to feel something this strong, lingo or no lingo. Now, boy, you listen to me. He got, he got. What's the matter with him? He's afraid of you. Miss Beecher! Mr. Beecher! What do you want? Uh, it's Indians, Mr. Beecher. Indians. Pony. Well, what about them? Well, they're setting up camp. Where? Um, well, they're over on the East Range. So they finally come for the boy. All right, Tater. Yes, sir. Turn the men out. Make sure they all have rifles. Yes, sir. Now, wait a minute. What? Before you start shooting, why don't you find out for sure if this really is your boy? I told you before, I know he's my boy. You want to believe that, but you aren't sure. All right, Paladin, say it out. What are you asking for? Time to talk with those Pawnees. Well, you go talk then, but I'll tell you one thing for sure. No matter what lies they give you, that boy's mine. And if they try to come after him, there'll be the bloodiest massacre you ever seen. Of all reading filters, cigarettes can't filter best, can't filter best. It makes good sense when you smoke can't, can't. Of all of the brands of cigarettes, can't taste the best, can't taste the best. A richer taste than all the rest, can't filter best. I rode out to the Pawnee camp knowing I had little time and less chance to stop a needless killing. There were squaws, braves, sitting, wandering. There were a hungry people and a lost people. At a tattered teepee, I found Kalete, chief of the Pawnees. Kalete was once man who greeted white man like brother. Now he wanders, hungry, forgotten like the gray wolf. I'm sorry. 
I... I wondered why Kalate was on this trail. White man steal children. Kalate will agree. A man may claim his own son. She was my son. Is he white? She was my son. I ask again, is he white? Skin is leather bag God made to hold the soul. Color of bag, no matter. He was traded from the Sioux. Our blood has mixed. But his is white. He is my son. I take him back. Kalate, if you take the boy, there'll be killing. This white man has many rifles. Can rifles kill what has been killed already? Look at my camp. When there is no game, my people starve. We are driven from land and winter is here. But we move no more. We stay here. Soon we take my son. Hello, Marty. Hello, Mr. Paladin. Wow, what's going on inside there? Oh, everyone's shining up clean. We're going to celebrate Christmas, Mr. Beecher, too. Mr. Beecher? Well, I know you won't believe it, but Tater did the trick, says to Mr. Beecher. Maybe the boy will remember Christmas. Ain't that a good one? Indian boy bringing us Christmas first time since Mr. Beecher lost his wife. Oh, got to find some more messy for decorating. Uh, we're going to have singing and eating and everything. Sounds fine, Marty. Well, Paladin, you see the chief? I talked to him. What did he say? He's your son. <laughs> I told you he was. You tell them engines to get their squaws and their tents off my property? No. Why not? You want them all killed? I want you to understand that Chief Kalata feels that the boy is his son, too, and he feels it very strongly. If you talk to him, I'd be glad to act as interpreter. The only way I'll talk to him and his flea-bitten braves is with rifle fire. Listen, Beecher. Chief Kalata is the only father the boy has ever known. You kill him. How are you going to explain that to the boy? You speak Pawnee. You can explain it. You're wrong, Mr. Beecher. Yeah? I couldn't explain that in any language. <laughs> Tater, I said rations, not all these fancy vittles. Well, it's Christmas, Mr. Beecher. Uh, now, look. Listen to me, all of you. Listen. If one calf wanders off tonight, we work double tomorrow, even if it is Christmas Day. All right, boys. The cider's sitting over there just waiting. You can't get no stouter, so you get to it. Hey, hey, hey. Marty, what is it? The boy's gone. Gone? They come and took him. Was it the Pawnees took him? Yes, sir. You knew about this, Paladin. I thought they'd try, but not so soon. Get your rifles. Now, just wait a minute. You're always reaching for a rifle. There's no need for rifles. No hurry. The Pawnees aren't going anywhere. They're tired of running. Preaching from a gunslinger. you just been aching to speak a piece. Well, speak it, Paladin. Talk don't mean nothing. Say anything you want. I'll still have the last say. Well, I'm far from being a preacher. But I do know something about killing. Now, these Indians, rightly or wrongly, believe the boy is theirs. A few people love children like the Pawnees. Now, the chief Kalati might have given up the boy. He knows a wealthy rancher could give the boy more than a starving Indian could, and they're starving. Properly treated, he still might give up the boy. On the other hand, these Pawnees can't run anymore. They're tired. But they would rather die here tonight and give up the child to force. It won't be hard to massacre them. They have no guns. All you have to do is stay out of arrow range. And those you only wound, well, someone will have to press a muzzle against their heads and pull a trigger. Now, this, this is no Christmas message. I haven't even suggested that to a starving man, food may carry more weight than rifles. As Mr. Beecher can tell you, sentiments like peace like goodwill and love and brotherhood, they're just words. Unless you already know what they mean. And if you don't, even if this were a chapel and I were a preacher, 
Such words would, would do no good. Well, I ain't got much to say. We're going out to kill some engines. One engine in particular. Anybody that wants can stay here and draw his time. If you think you can find another job. And those who ain't going with me, speak up. Right now. Yeah. That's the story since the beginning, Mr. Paladin. The belly always wins out. My dear Watson, with all due respect to Sherlock Holmes, let us establish one fact clearly. There is nothing elementary about the shrewd deductions Eric Severide makes as he analyzes world affairs on CBS Radio. As chief Washington correspondent for CBS News, Mr. Severide has opened to him almost every possible source of information. Experience has sharpened his perspective and given him an extraordinary working knowledge of the forces that make history. It's taught him to view each new development in terms of cause and effect. Each Monday through Friday night, as you'll join Eric Severide on most of these same stations, you'll find his news analysis remarkably free of snap judgments and predetermined conclusions. You'll discover, too, that his carefully considered appraisals of the news not only contain real clues as to what is going on in the world, but also they make the news as exciting as any Arthur Conan Doyle story. <laughs> Beecher's men spilled out of the doorway of the main house to change clothes and get their rifles. I slipped out the back way, and taking the first horse I saw, headed for the Indian camp. Somehow, I had to keep Matt Beecher from starting a bloodbath he might not be able to stop. Even as Kalati and I talked, I knew there were horses moving in the darkness beyond the Indians' fires. Beecher's horses. You are a wise man, my son, but we stay. A man without a gun still might run? No place to run. I have forgotten how to kill, but not how to die. But what good does this do the boy? Could he take another father after this? We got the camp surrounded. You want to explain that to the chief, Paladin? He knows it. You going to stand with them instead of with your own people? I ask you a question. I heard you. Hold your fire, boys. That's Morty. Women, what are they doing here? Mr. Paladin! Over here, Morty. We've got food and things for them Indians. There's 15 or 20 of us. Is it all right to come in there? <laughs> it's the most all right thing in the world, Morty. Come on. All right, ladies. Get the basket. We'll get it. What is? Call your squaws, Chief. Call your children. Call the boy. They're bringing food and gifts for your people. Shiva! Holange! Honemo! Well, they don't look very friendly, Mr. Paladin. I guess you don't look very friendly to them. Uh, what do we say? Oh, I'd suggest you try Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas? Uh, to Christmas. Uh... Morty, this is Kalate. He's the chief of the Pawnee. How do you do? Oh. I, um, uh, we, oh, uh, well, I only got one pair of hands. Here, you take this basket. Uh, hold on there, Morty. I'm with you. Hello, Tater. <laughs> Hello, Mr. Paladin. <laughs> I come in too, Mr. Paladin. Well, Pete. Now, what Beecher's doing is wrong, and I don't care if I do get fired. Well, look, Mr. Paladin, all the men are coming in. Why, Morty, you ain't rightly dressed for riding. Oh, ladies, now it's the time to change, oh, but you sure don't have to... Oh. Well, Chief, there'll be no bloodletting tonight. Uh, Christmas? That's right. They call it Christmas. It's a, it's a time of the year when people pretend there is no evil in the world. Uh, I like. Uh, everybody likes what about the boy, Chief? His name is Robbie Beecher. His skin is white. Chief? My boy. <laughs> His boy, Chief. You can return the seed to the plant that bore it. He can't take it, nor can I, nor can anyone. I talk to boy. I'll talk to his father.
Hold it, Paladin. Right there. He'll give you the boy, Beecher. What? You can take him home tonight. The chief is talking to him now, telling him that you're his father. I'll kill you, Paladin, if this is some kind of way of getting back at me. When do I get my boy? I haven't been paid yet. Thousand dollars cash. Well, I haven't got it with me. Well, when can you have it? Tomorrow. Then give it to the chief so he can buy some land for himself and his people. Uh, I'll do better than that. I'll give him some land. I feel like I should give something. <laughs> It's a good feeling, isn't it? As a matter of fact, it is. Merry Christmas, Mr. Beecher. Merry Christmas, Mr. Paladin. Good afternoon, hey boy. When you come back? Last night, late. Oh, uh, excuse me. Oh, no. Wait, not her. You met her once, remember? I remember. She's always dropping her glove. Oh, too bad. I eat trouble. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. I beg your pardon. You dropped your glove. Oh, oh so I did. Um... May I pick it up? You may. Thank you. Allow me to introduce myself? <laughs> well, please do. My name is Paladin. Uh, my name is Eugenie Meyer, Mr. Paladin. Oh. There's a princess named Eugenie. Uh, I, I'd rather hear about that glove that holds a lady's hand. Holds a world of prettiness? Yes. <laughs> I like that beginning better. Is there more? Oh, there's a great deal more, I assure you. But one question, why the change of heart? Well, it's, a, it's more a change of mind. The change of heart can come later. <laughs> but why? You were very confident in your rejection the last time we met. Well, you were very confident of yourself, Mr. Paladin. Christmas seems to have humbled you and me. Then we're both very fortunate. Now we can meet. <laughs> yes. Gun Will Travel. Created by Herb Meadow and Sam Rolfe. Is produced and directed by Norman McDonald and stars John Daner as Paladin with Ben Wright as Hayboy. Tonight's story was written by Gene Roddenberry and adapted for radio by John Dawson. Featured in the cast were Vic Perrin, Jess Kirkpatrick, Roy Woods, Richard Beals, Anne Morrison, and Virginia Christine. Hugh Douglas speaking. Join us again next week for Have Gun, Will Travel.
This has been a presentation of otrwesterns.com, and we hope you enjoyed. Please take some time to like and rate our shows in your favorite podcast application. Follow us on Facebook by going to otrwesterns.com slash Facebook. Join in the conversation by going to otrwesterns.com slash Discord. And don't forget to send us an email, podcast at otrwesterns.com. This episode is copyright under the attribution, not commercial, share like copyright. For more information, go to otrwesterns.com slash copyright. Have a great day, and again, thanks for listening.